spotting guide to help you identify the creatures we'll see. I can't stop for every single one, so please keep that in mind. Have those cameras and cell phones out and ready and hold on to them tightly. It does get a little bit bumpy. And then just a friendly reminder to make sure you keep your conversations at an indoor level. No whistling, mocking, or yelling at the animals. We don't want to disrupt their peace. We are the guests in their homes today, so it's important we stay respectful. Now today our journey begins in the Little Aturi Forest, where animals will rely on their camouflage to protect themselves from predators. Let's take a look over here to our right. In that far left corner, you'll see an okapi, which is a very shy and reclusive forest animal. Many believe that they're related to the zebra because of their stripes, but they're actually the closest living relative to the giraffe. And that's because of their similar skull structures. On our left, this bird is the saddle-billed stork. They have an impressive wingspan of up to nine feet. You can tell that that one was a female because the females don't have bright yellow eyes while males have dark brown and they'll communicate to one another by rattling their bills. Sometimes our friends like to hang out at the bottom of the riverbed. to 500 pairs. Then over here to our left, we'll see some of the Nile hippopotamus. Now when the hippos are born, they'll weigh anywhere between 85 to 100 pounds, and they'll mature up to about 5,500 pounds on average. They tend to stay under water to help prevent their bodies from overheating. They can actually hold their breath for up to eight minutes at a time. Now it's easy to assume that hippos know how to swim given how much they are underwater, but they don't. They'll walk and run at the bottom of the river and on land they're pretty fast, charging up at 33 miles an hour. Just a couple more over there. Over this bridge, we're gonna go poly poly, which means to go very, very slowly in Swahili. It's gonna take us to our next stop of the day. and tusks to poke holes into the tree to release that water as some of them can hold up towards 10,000 gallons worth. And so 
though because of the purpose that they serve out here, many people also like to refer to them as the tree of life. Now, just got a radio call here that said that the giraffes up ahead are actually in the road, so the truck can't move just yet. I do see the keeper's truck driving around, so <laughs> hopefully it shouldn't be too much longer. We'll kind of get an idea here in just a bit. As the trucks move up a little bit more, we can get a better view, at least while we wait. just as about far up as I can get for now. But at least they're all out right now. Um, you can see that they're all eating. They love to eat all day long. They only sleep for about 30 minutes a day. Usually standing up. Not even all at once, and that's to help prevent being vulnerable towards other predators that could be in the area. see all the giraffes out here. A group of giraffes is also known as a tower. I'm hoping that we'll have the opportunity to see one a little bit closer by the trucks. And as they eat from the trees, sometimes they can't reach for their favorite leaves that are at the top of it. So they'll use their 16 inch long tongue. It, that's on average, but they can range anywhere between 14 to 20 inches. Their tongues are also prehensile, which means that they use them kind of like how we use our own hands by picking those fingers, those leaves off one by one, kind of like how we use our fingers. Their saliva is also a lot thicker in consistency to help protect their mouth from any thorns found on the trees as they're eating. Now let's see, looks like the giraffe has moved, so that truck is moving along. We'll try to see what other animals we can see on this side over here. Let's take a look over here to our left. In that far left corner, you'll see some of the African wild dogs. They're also known as the paint dogs for their unique patchwork on their furry coats. They're able to identify one another up to a mile away and are Africa's most successful hunters with a 90% success rate. And that's because they'll pursue their prey in groups until it drops from exhaustion. about to be a giraffe crossing here. So. I said earlier too that a lot of the animals here use their speed and agility. The giraffes are still pretty fast. Um, their long legs will help them travel at about 35 miles an hour over a short distance and they're able to cruise at about 10 over a long distance. Now here to our left you'll see some of the Ankoli cattle which are also known as the Watusi cattle, named after the tribe who first domesticated them. Their horns will grow to be about three to four feet long, helping them aid in their blood circulation and regulating their body temperatures. In the back there to the left as well are some of the sable antelopes. They'll live to be about 17 to 18 years old in the wild. Their horns that arch all the way back will help to deter predators from jumping from behind them. They're very well known for their bravery and confidence. They're one of the few antelope species that will stand their ground, so that also makes them the emblem of our reserve. Now, I can't tell. I think this truck is stopped because it looks like the giraffe's foot is in the road. So anytime their feet or a head is kind of just sticking in the road, we pretty much just have to wait until it's safe to proceed. They're the pedestrians, they get that right away. But, okay. It's kind of a stop and go situation here, so. Oh, and here's a good example of what I was talking about to our right. The giraffe was kind of picking up the trees at the top there. Now, scattered throughout the savanna as well are some of the termite mounts. 
in soil. They're going to bake in the hot sun all day long, soaking up. So a lot of the animals end up using them as a scratching post, and in some cases, another place to hide from predators. in the world reaching speeds of 50 to 60 miles an hour. As their name suggests, they can spring up into the air six feet high and leap forward 13 feet. Now up ahead, I do see some knocked over trees, which could be a sign we are getting close to some elephant territory. So we'll keep our eyes off for that. The spin is home to millions of migrating animals each and every year. So what we find out here today will always vary and change based on their sleeping and migration patterns. Oh, it looks like the African elephant is making his way on down. Perfect timing. Now you can tell that it's an African elephant just by the shape of its ear as it looks like the continent of Africa. They're going to live to be about 60 to 70 years old. Here to our left, you'll see some of the mandrels. They're the largest of the monkey species, weighing about 100 pounds once they're fully mature. They have those brilliant blue and red facial markings that'll become a lot brighter as they get more excited. Now male elephants tend to be a lot more solitary and independent. Versus the female, they're young, who like to stay in larger groups, so we are going to try our best to see if we can actually catch up to another herd up ahead here. Now one way you can help some of these animals, especially the mandrels and other African primates, is by recycling. One item you can recycle are any small electronics, such as old cell phones or maybe even smartwatches you no longer use. That's because many of them live on lands that are mined for a key mineral known as coltan, which is used to make them to be more small and powerful. And by recycling them, you can help to preserve and protect their lands little by little. which holds a great significance in the lives of the elephants, and that's because they'll eat of the clay in order to obtain important nutrients and minerals that they don't necessarily get in their everyday diets. Elephants can usually eat up to 300 pounds of food per day. Usually those vary on their size, like the one we just saw. He can eat definitely up to 300 pounds of food. Now, as many of us know, the elephants also use their chunks in a lot of their tasks throughout their day-to-day -day lives. Their chunks alone have 40,000 muscles inside, which gives them the ability to pick up about 600 pounds. Now, usually we find them over here towards the watering hole. We'll try our best to see what we can find. As it gets a little bit warmer throughout the day, you'll notice that the elephants will flap their ears back and forth. That helps to keep their body temperatures down about 15 degrees cooler. The watering hole also helps. They're going to play, bathe, and hydrate. They can hold up to five gallons of water in their trunks. And instead of using their trunks as straws, they'll hold the water inside and then release it into their mouth whenever they're thirsty. I do see an elephant further out there to our left, but up ahead is also a little island filled with the greater flamingos, which are the tallest of their species, standing at about five feet on average. They're also the lightest shade of pink because when they're born, they're the color gray, 
And over time, their feathers will change and turn pink based on their diets, which will primarily consist of tiny bright shrimp and other water creatures that are high in dirt. When we made it to the far side of the savanna here, I always like to recommend keeping your eyes out amongst the vegetation, such as the bushes and trees, as sometimes our friends like to hang out in those more shaded areas. It can be a little bit tricky to find that first. But it looks like some of them are already out and about here. To our left, you'll see some of the white rhinos. A group of white rhinos is also known as a crash. That's because they have the tendency to crash into things. As their eyesight isn't too good, they can only see about 10 feet in front of them. They do have really good hearing though, as they have little hairs on their ears to help amplify sound. Now the babies when they're born are about 100 pounds, and they'll mature up to about 4,000 to 5,000 pounds. You can tell that they're white rhinos as well, just by the shape of their mouth, as it's a lot wider and square shaped. While black rhinos have a pointed prehensile upper lip. Head here to our left. I do see some cheetahs. One's walking on down. Cheetahs are the fastest land mammals in the world, reaching speeds of zero to 60 miles an hour in three seconds. They have those black tear marks that'll run from their eyes down to their mouth to help reflect the glare of the sun as they're running. Cheetahs are also diurnal, which means they're most active during the day. Shortly here, we're going to be heading up towards the Kopi, which is the little island of rocks you'll see to help give the lions the best overlook of the savanna and to watch for their territory. Lions are nocturnal, so they're most active at night. They're going to sleep and rest for 16 to 20 hours a day, so we'll try our best to see if we can find any. Oh, there you go. I was even looking for him. We'll try to see if we can find him a little bit better on the other side here. Actually, we'll stop right about here. Elizabeth, do you see the lion? Now, the lioness, which are the female lions, do a majority of the hunting for the pride, while the lion will stay behind watching over his cubs and the territory. Yeah. With them being nocturnal, their eyesight is also six times more powerful in the dark than ours is. Still surprisingly, they only have about a 30% success rate while hunting. Looks like he's going to jump on now. I think he's getting ready for bed. Oh, there they go. When they roar, that's actually an indication that they're getting ready to go to sleep too. And sometimes all together when you hear them roar, they can be heard up to about five miles away. So that was perfect timing. We're going to try to see what else we can find over here on this side. Ostriches are the largest birds in the world. They don't fly, but they do run at about 40 miles an hour using their large wings to help steer and change their direction as they run. Their long legs will help them stride up to about 10 to 16 feet. And then a little bit further up ahead here to our right, if you look down on the floor, they're gonna be a little bit more further up, are some ostrich eggs. Those will weigh an average of three pounds each. And they can withhold a lot of weight on top of them, up to about 480 pounds. Now 
we're going to be passing by the warden's post where the warden and his staff will help take care of the goats and in return the goats are going to provide milk for the village to help our community both nutritionally and economically that's because goat's milk is very high in value because of its sweetness now the ones you see here today are the nigerian dwarf goats they're very playful social friendly animals that are going to spend most of their days resting and eating they love to climb as it helps with their stability and balance and they're one of the two domesticated animals on the reserve, along with the Ancoli cattle. Now everybody, we are getting closer to the outskirts of the village, which does mean that our time is wrapping up. However, I hope you all have enjoyed your tour here at Kilimanjaro Safaris. Hopefully you learned something new and got a good picture too, but most importantly, I hope at least one of you were inspired by the animals you saw. Remember, you can help to protect them by exploring the outdoors, recycling, and learning more about conservation funds all over the world. At Animal Kingdom, they have the Disney Conservation Fund. If you'd like to learn more about what they've accomplished or what you can do to help, you can head over to the Harambe Market where villagers out there are happy to assist as I know that their main goal is to ensure a happier and healthier planet for us all and these beloved animals. And if you were a wilderness explorer today, even on the Simba One, once again, wilderness explorers, you've been riding the Simba One. Now everyone here in Harambe, we do not like to say goodbye, it's far too sad and final. Instead, we'll say Kwaharini, which means to go well. So everyone, go out and eat, go well, go wild, enjoy the rest of your day here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Once again, my name was Monica. It was a pleasure being your tour guide. Please make sure to double check your rows, gather your personal belongings, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. 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 Thank you.